we all love you from Dragon's Den as a philanthropist. I always say you spend your time literally using your money for so much good. And Nia and you are finally meeting each other for the first time. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. A little Might bit of a well. love fest happening. So we're going to get into, first of all, what you know best and sharing your expertise um, when it comes to being an entrepreneur and making it out there. And you have a lot of different skill sets and tips for people. Well, I often comment and criticize my show, Dragon's Den, for the theatrical rudeness that we presented, but that makes great television. But ignore the criticism and let's celebrate what that show did really well. And it was called Planting Seeds of Entrepreneurship. And I happen to believe if we plant seeds, you're going to get a crop. It's that line, short putts don't go in, shots you don't take by Gretzky don't go in. In my world, it's 100% of the crops you don't plant don't grow. So planting seeds of entrepreneurship, seeds of philanthropy, and almost most importantly to start with, seeds of marketing. Marketing, understanding marketing skills and tools. Given what's happening in social media right yeah, now, how do you if you don't it? have those skills, those tools, you have nothing to start with. Which is, you're so big on social media, Nia, you realize yeah. that. So how do you maintain it all? Or how do you build that company on top of, you know, feeding it to social media? All this stuff requires a ton of time. And then philanthropy seems like that's something that happens down the road, right? <laughs> well, I actually think that philanthropy is good business. So when we started our business, we allocated, in this case, First Energy, the big brokerage firm I was involved with, we allocated 2.5% of our pre-tax profits. Well, 2.5% of nothing on day one, it's easy to allocate. 2.5% mm -hmm. of a meaningful business became a big, because the, the industry standard at the time was half of 1%. So we were going to five times that, but we called philanthropy our marketing budget. Yeah. It's how we built relationships. It's how we owned relationships. People said, you're expecting stuff from your philanthropy work? Yeah. That's yeah. okay. And There's nothing wrong with that. Marketing, do you include social media in that? Today you have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the world, I always say it's a mistake not to be on Twitter. It's a bigger mistake to be active on Twitter. And I'll apply <laughs> That's <it>. great. That's <laughs> great. Well, you need to understand how these tools work. Because if you don't know, and your children know, and your competitors know, then you're not keeping up. Yeah. And so that's why I say if you're not on Twitter, jump on Twitter and watch, follow two celebrity women and see what they're thinking and talking and follow five or six news feeds. Just learn how the tool works. It's not about using it, it's about understanding how it works. Likewise, how, there isn't how a business. It's not about using it because then that's how you can get more of your messaging out there, no? It's how you start. Is uh, what I'm saying is a lot of people say, well, I don't have a message to put out. Right. Well, you better understand how the tool works because most businesses ultimately are connecting through social media. And whether you have a website or a Facebook page, doesn't matter. You need an online presence of some mm -hmm. sort because Google or Bling or Yahoo is how people are finding you. They're not flipping open the yellow pages mm -hmm. going auto dealers. They're not, they're not looking that way anymore. And when you do post whatever you do put out there, also be very careful of because a lot of people are doing things, you know, the party side to them, which does not <laughs> bode well when other people are researching your company or looking to hire you as an individual. They don't well, want to see you in Ibiza topless with, you know, margaritas. <laughs> they just don't want to do it. It's true. You know, the other thing, too, it. is Ask Me Anything AMAs on Reddit are fantastic mm -hmm. because if you're not actually, when I had my book tour, I had a book out called Instant Mom, and when I went on my book tour and I did the Reddit, my, my, the people said, don't just talk about the book because it's a turnoff. Right. So instead, I just talked about my big fat Greek wedding and different movies that I'd done and places that I'd shot. And it was so interesting because you got to actually talk to people from all over the world. Well, and that's the connecting moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say you have to understand how these tools work. It's not a matter of being active on them but it's a matter of understanding really well. Because as I say, if you don't understand and your competitor does, then they have an advantage. That's such a good, t that's a good point, that people can read through more and more uh, what's blatant yeah. advertising or points to bring home. So you have to have a well-rounded version of yourself, which is also very difficult to, to do when you are trying to build a business because you have to pull yourself into it. How do you pull yourself out to strike a balance? Well, there's no easy there's no easy answer to that right. in terms of every but business is going to have its own. <laughs> yeah, we want every, easy every business is going to have its own outcome. You know, a, a retail business is going to be very active. The service business less active. So it, it's going to be tempered to the business and its stage of startup. Bell uses social media in a way to broadcast to its own um, the peoples or every network, if you will. It doesn't matter. Um, what if your idea sucks? and your friends don't tell you, and you don't have Kevin O'Leary telling you either, how do you know if it's worth pursuing, or if, how do you find something else that will stick? Tenacity is a virtue. Delusion leads to failure. And there's a line between that that many entrepreneurs cross. You know, Ray Kroc didn't get McDonald's going until he was 56. 
really? 56 years old. Colonel Sanders was still messing around with chicken recipes in his 60s before he got that off the ground. So it's not a matter of when, mm. it's if. And that's why I want to plant the seeds so that there's never a question of if you'll be an entrepreneur. It's just a question of when. Well done. We've all learned something here today. Me too. And you're still rocking the flowery shirts and you said you chose this specifically because there's a lot of blue in it today. Well, I was online. I'm watching the two of you. It's a nice balance of stripes and 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 splash. What's Kevin doing? I Kevin's some pointing to the inside of your shirt. Oh yeah, there's oh, a little. Wow. Well, that's <laughs> the same brand. Okay, wow. and the socks. Okay, oh, anyway, whatever. Now it's <laughs> becoming a and fashion stop there. segment with Brett Wilson. He's showing us up. For more information, wbrettwilson.ca. Follow him on Twitter as well. He does tweet. I know you say you, you don't fully... My dog tweets. I mean, I understand the world of Twitter. You texted your dog as a result of Kevin playing the Shannon song today. It made you miss your dog. Well, I sent a, actually a tweet to the <laughs> to the dog because someone will see that. But yeah, I when like, Shannon, he had tweet. me in tears watching this. I mean, it's a guy thing. I, yeah. I actually pictured your dog receiving tweets or something. I'm like, what is this dog from Family Guy? This they is show him pictures. <laughs> yeah, I, I love my dogs too. They sleep in my mouth. Do you Skype your dog? Yeah. Oh, no, I will, though. If I go away for a long period of time, I would Skype with my yeah, dogs. Yeah, my kids Skype They're gonna with their pets. We're going to continue chatting. We're anyway. going to take a quick break. Good, good to see you, Rhett. We'll be back with more BT right after this. How many